So we at the National Institute have just released our latest economic outlook and the big picture is that, yeah, by all measures of the economy, uh, things are flatlining, growth isn't particularly uh, strong, inflation's coming down, but the overall picture about what it means for us is actually that people are going to feel better off or, well, on average, slightly less worse off because wages are going to be more elevated this year and inflation is coming down uh, at a slightly faster rate than we we're expecting. So those two things together I mean we're actually seeing an increase in the real value of uh, our wages on average. Now, that won't apply to everybody. There will be some people who feel a real pinch as a result of still quite high food inflation and wages still trying to catch up to where they were previously. But overall, we're gonna feel a slightly less uh, squeezed budgets uh, than uh, previously. Um, that will be also potentially good news in the future uh, as a result of interest rates potentially coming down if inflation is uh, a little uh, less strong than we're expecting it to be. So those on mortgages might feel slightly less of a um, strong assault on their uh, on their monthly repayments as those interest rates start to come down. So overall, yes, the economy might be flatlining, uh, but we might see uh, slightly better living conditions than we did previously. So will inflation fall back to target this year? We think so, around April time, uh, inflation will fall below the bank's 2% target. One of the main reasons for that, though, is more how we count inflation than the actual economic conditions underneath us. So uh, really what's going on here is we compare inflation today to where it was a year ago. And as we move on through time, a lot of the inflation from the past basically drops out the back. So that's what's probably going to happen in April. The inflation from the previous year, which was really high, won't be included in those calculations. So it'll look like inflation has fallen quite sharply, even if uh, the economic conditions haven't actually changed that much. Uh, that will uh, mean that it's possible that inflation comes back up again. It won't go up to 10% again, but we do forecast actually a little bit of a rise uh, in inflation and it will actually break uh, the bank's 2% target around that same time. So you kind of get the picture that inflation will be a little bit volatile this year. You might hear stories about inflation falling back to target and then suddenly coming back up again. So that might be a very consistent theme over 2024. A similar theme that we might see is a slightly worse picture if the conflict in the Red Sea deter deteriorates any further. We have seen quite a lot of evidence so far of shipping costs really rising over the last few weeks. So if that uh, situation is persistent and is uh, something that it could even get worse, then we could see actually a slightly um, less good inflation picture than we projected for this year. But do head over to our economic outlook if you want to see more detail about that. So what will the labour market look like over 2024? If you look at the headline measures, it might look like the labour market is basically back to where it was before the pandemic. But I'll show you why in a little more detail why that's actually not really the case. So the big challenge caused over the pandemic was an imbalance between the available workers and the number of jobs that were uh, going. So employers had to work really hard to attract a pretty small uh, domestic labour force uh, into their uh, respective jobs. So one of the developments that we've seen uh, over the recent weeks and months has been a returning in that uh, balance. So we see, you know, broadly uh, what we would expect for uh, the number of available vacancies to unemployed people. So that has come back to normal and the job posting that we've seen has somewhat calmed down a little bit. But two important things we think have changed. Number one is we think that the number of uh, available international workers has risen and that is what is driving most of the fall in vacancies over the last year. To just give you an example of that, the number of uh, firms that are registered to sponsor work visas normally was around 30,000, exploded to something like 80,000 over two years from a pretty stable measure. Suddenly you see this huge increase and we think that partly reflects um, UK firms potentially being frustrated with a lack of domestic uh, workforce and looking elsewhere to try and fill their vacancies. The second thing that we think has changed is the number of hours worked. So we've seen a little bit of a fall uh, since before the pandemic. Uh, and what that could mean is that, yes, those vacancies are being filled, but they might be being filled by uh, more part-time workers. And that has sort of structurally changed the labour market. So we're seeing more international workers and less hours worked. And that, we think, has uh, really changed the labour market over the last uh, year or so. So will we feel a little bit better off this year? I think that's a really tricky question to answer because it depends what you compare it to. 
If you compare it to last year, then we'll feel a little bit less worse off for three reasons. Number one, interest rates are due to be cut at the second half of this year. So if you have a mortgage, that means that if you come to remortgage uh, this year, you might not face as much of a rise in your monthly repayments than you are otherwise expecting. Secondly, if you have a savings account, you might have noticed your interest rate that you're getting on the money that you've got in your account be a little bit higher uh, as the effect of those interest rates rising passes through into your savings account. And then thirdly, which is that wages are higher than in uh, inflation. So wages are nice and elevated, which means we're slowly feeling a little bit better off than we were before. Uh, but if we compare to pre-pandemic, then obviously we probably won't be. Uh, the uh, clear reason for that is that energy and food bills are still way above where they were um, before the pandemic. Uh, secondly, we have government support coming to an end for people uh, who needed that support during the cost of living crisis. And then thirdly, is this concept of a stealth tax, which is essentially uh, what happens when you keep tax thresholds the same as wages are trying to catch up with inflation. That pulls people into a new tax bracket and means you're basically paying more in tax than you were before that situation started. So those three things together, amongst uh, many others, mean that we'll probably not feel very good over the last few years, even if this year is slightly better than uh, we've seen previously.